I'm on an anti-aging protocol uh, from my doctor that includes testosterone replacement, but I don't take any steroids. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athletics.com. So today I'm gonna critique Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s training, nutrition, recovery, conditioning, TRT. We're gonna talk all about it because let's face it guys, he's 70 years old and regardless of your political beliefs, there might be something here to be found out that could benefit us. So with that said, let's start breaking it down. I do four different routines at the gym. I do backs one day, back uh, chest one day, legs and then a miscellaneous. So obviously when you look like RFK Jr., a lot of people are gonna wanna know how does he train? And there's his split right there. Now, is it the best split? I've got some feedback on that. Number one, if I were gonna do that split, I'd probably break it up the following way. I would start with chest because Monday's International Chest Day, of course. Then I would go with legs in between so I would break up my upper body. Then I'd come back with my back workout, take a day off, come back with that miscellaneous workout and then take two days off to prioritize recovery. Again, as you get older, recovery is a deal that you wanna actually make sure you're focusing on. That being said, I look at this more like a push-pull leg split anyway, because even though he's highlighting chest, it's really hard to work your chest without also working your shoulders and your triceps. And likewise, when he talks about back training, it's really hard to work your back without working your arms. But his miscellaneous day actually is comprised of direct bicep, direct tricep work, as well as forearm and calf work too. So he is hitting everything. For those of you that are out there wondering whether or not it's enough frequency, you start to become older, frequency becomes something you need to be more concerned about. There are only so many rotations on the tire, so to speak, available to you. So being a little bit more cognizant of keeping those training volumes down, but training them off for some intensity could be a great idea. Rising for 50 years, and what I found is it's sustainable if, you know, if I do just a short periods. I go to the gym for 35 minutes. I never relax at the gym. I go in there and I have a very intense exercise. My first set of everything, I try to reach failure at 12 reps. And then my fourth set of everything is a strip set. And there's the alternative method, right? Trading in workout length for intensity. Something I've said all along here, guys, is that you either can train long or you can train hard, but you can't do both. And what he does is he opts to train hard and that allows him to shorten those workouts to 35 minutes, making them more sustainable. Again, the key to any training or workout regimen is to have it be consistently performed. Well, that's allowing him to do that. Now, specifically, he's talking about going to failure. And a lot of people sit on a different side of the fence when it comes to training to failure. I happen to be one that believes that training to failure is a good thing because it gives you that objective hard line where you know you've reached enough or an adequate stimulus to create growth without having to guess whether or not you've actually come within a close enough range to cause that to happen. So he talks about the first set going to failure and the last set actually being to and through failure with a strip set, which is one of my favorite ways to train. Now specifically for him, or for anybody that's a little bit older, that method is actually a great method to use because you can still train with heavy enough weights to stimulate strength gains, right? By taking a weight that would cause failure, let's say in the four, five, or six rep range, and then drop it down to a weight that's half as much for the back end of that strip set. And what that does is it gives you a chance to have a more manageable weight in that fatigue state. So when you're trying to drive hypertrophy through focus, concentration, recruitment of the muscle you're actually trying to build, you're not having to do it with weights that you can't handle. Or alternatively, as you'll see him do in a second, and that you could do too, you could just stack them together as a series of exercises in sequence, right? Giant sets. Taking the metabolic route to hypertrophy, providing less of that overall stress from the heavier weights, a little easier on your joints, but still giving you the stimulus that you're looking for for growth. And of course, when it comes to what that training looks like specifically, there's no shortage of footage out there on social media for us to take a peek. And uh, look, I wouldn't say he's picture perfect in terms of his form, though that inclined bench press looks pretty good right there. But the idea is he's gonna be scrutinized and people are gonna look at these things and complain about, let's say even that curl form there, and even I would, but we'll get into that in a second. Or maybe the fact that he shows up to all of his workouts in jeans. We call those guys job site Joey. The idea is there's more comfortable workout clothing he can wear, and there's probably things he can do to improve some of those specific exercises, so let's break some of them down one by one. But can we start with those curls? Because in the words of his patriotic uncle, ask not what your curls can do for you, but rather what you can do for your curls, and that is, in this case, improve them. Je Jesse, can I get a confirmation? Was that the quote? That's the quote. Okay, so look, it. these need a lot of work. Obviously, when you get to the top of a curl, 
you want to be a little bit shoulder flexion. You don't want to be pulling back into extension. You're kind of performing like a horizontal row with the barbell that's not going to actually resist you in that direction. But more importantly, and I'm not trying to break him on him because he's got good arms. When you get to the top of the curl, you can see him pulling in. The reason why he's doing that is a natural cheat. The hardest portion of the curl is going to be in that mid range. And when you're in that position, the further your arms are out away from you, granted that they're still elbows are bent, the biceps are gonna feel more of that. So by shortening it and pulling it in, you're pulling that moment arm a little bit shorter also and making it easier. So my recommendation here would be just to lighten up those curls a little bit and get a better contraction. Now we talk about pull-ups. And again, people wanna get all over him for his pull-ups. The first thing I wanna point out proudly is he's plugging the energy leaks by having those legs out in front of him, core tightened. It makes it easier, but God darn it. I mean, look at the thing that he's using. That thing is rocking like crazy. Anything he's trying, any energy leak he's trying to plug here is being betrayed and undermined by the fact that someone put him on the most rickety pull up bar they've ever seen. It doesn't make this any easier. And as far as range of motion, guys, I am a stickler here. It doesn't matter what number you get if you're short arming it on the bottom and not getting all the way to the top. And just to get on him and be fair, if he was in our competition that we have at Athlete Next Live, I would say no rep, no rep, no rep, no rep, because he never gets down to a full dead hang and he never gets above the bar. And the most important part of any pull up is gonna be that release from here to here to a full dead arm hang, because that's the most challenging part to recover from. You can't really assess pull up strength unless you allow yourself to go full dead arm hang, because that's the part that you're gonna have, that's the sticking point in the exercise. And by limiting it, it's like doing a half bench press and never going down to the chest. You really can't test someone's true strength by doing that. Next up, we've got this inclined barbell bench press. He's got his trainer there, he's got them all fired up. It's funny, he says, I'm not gonna touch the bar unless you stop for more than a second. I'm not gonna touch the bar until I see it stop for more than a second. Or until I see it stop for more than a second. And we can assess that too. But his form is actually pretty good here. And before people give him shit for not having a lot of weight on the bar, I referenced before how he likes to go through these giant sets and circuits. This is not the only thing he did. He did something prior to this. I believe he said it was flies. And then he goes into this exercise and then he goes and he drops down as you'll see with push-ups also. And there's the trainer going and grabbing that bar every rep and celebrating his achievement for spotting him. <laughs> Not a bad bench press, again, good form here. Again, the weight, I think, is dictated by the fact that he can handle more, and we know that, because here he is training with Mark Bell, talking about a previous rotator cuff injury, and Mark giving him a chance to train with the uh, slingshot. But more importantly, he's got 135 pounds here, not quite getting down to the chest yet, but he, he will after a few repetitions, but he winds up handling it for 16 repetitions. So he, clearly he can handle more. Again, people wanna give him, they wanna jump to the clips they see in social media to get, jump all over him, He's stronger than what you think, guys. Again, I would not say that weak is one word that would describe RFK Jr. And of course, his push-ups, and again, I mentioned him being in a fatigued state when doing these. These are a little short for me. Again, you wanna get the full range of motion, come all the way up. This is what we call the prison yard push-up, right? Where you focus more on the chest by staying in that really low range of motion. And look, at, he looks great. I mean, I'm not gonna get on. Look, whoever wants to start getting on him for his, his routine, Clearly it's working for him, but is it all because of what he's doing in his routine or maybe is he getting just a little extra help? I'm on an anti-aging protocol uh, from my doctor that includes testosterone replacement, and, uh, but I don't take any steroids. I don't take any anabolic steroids or anything like that. And uh, the DRT I use is, uh, is bioidentical to what my body produced. What are your thoughts on hormone therapy in general? I talk to a lot of doctors about that stuff, you know, because I'm interested in health. And, uh, you know, I've heard really good things about it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on it. And so now we obviously have to talk about this because when you look at a physique at the age of 70, like RFK Jr., well, the natural questions arise. But in this case, he's not hiding his answers. He's saying, I use an anti-aging protocol and I use testosterone replacement therapy. Now, when I hear anti-aging, I think less about replacement when you're deficient and I think more about boosting up your levels to sort of prevent the inevitable decline that would happen with age. So I'm not saying that he's going completely super physiologic levels and he's using this in a performance enhancing way, but if there is no deficit, and let's face it, a lot of times, guys, these days, there is no deficit to start with. People are rushing to TRT as a way to amplify their physiques. Now, 
I know he states here that he's not taking steroids specifically. That means he may not be doing trend, clen, or anything else that rhymes with that, but he is using testosterone, which in and of itself is anabolic, especially if you're using it to reach these super physiological levels. Now, do I care that he's doing that? I really don't. I don't care who does whatever they do. It's personal preference. But when people look at him, and want to aspire to look like him, especially if they're at the same age, you have to understand in the big picture what's contributing to what he looks like and then perhaps even temper your expectations. I do intermittent fasting. I have my first meal at around noon mm -hmm. and then I try to stop eating at six or seven. So obviously his nutrition is playing a part in him being as lean as he is as well and it looks good that being said intermittent fasting isn't really a diet it's just a strategy for how you eat and most of all i find it to be successful when people have a problem with grazing right they go all day and they like to pick a little bit here a little bit there a little bit here they're the same people who say at the end of the day i don't eat anything but meanwhile if you total up their calories they're in a surplus. By doing intermittent fasting and restricting your eating window, so in this case, either six hours or seven hours, you have that period of 17 hours or 18 hours of fasting. This particular strategy, however, is one that I think is worth highlighting because it's the one that allows us to do intermittent fasting and still follow what most would call a socially acceptable eating schedule, right? You skip breakfast in the morning, which a lot of times we're short on time anyway, we don't really have a lot of time to do it. And we resume our eating at 12 o'clock or noon. So we get to have lunch with our coworkers. We get to come home and have dinner with our families. It's the one that's least interruptive. And again, anything that's least interruptive is likely going to allow you to be most consistent with it. And when it comes to nutrition, consistency is king. If you want to lose weight and stay lean, you need to be able to follow the method that allows you to get there in the first place. For him, this one works. And for you, it might as well. I take a lot of... Um vitamins i i can't even list them to you here because i you know I, I i couldn't even remember them all but i take a ton of vitamins and nutrients and so boy can i relate to him because i take a handful of vitamins and nutrients every morning too and if i had to list them all out i definitely couldn't do that just sitting here trying to remember them all but i do know this that list has grown decade by decade every year that i get older and the fact is our bodies tend to utilize nutrients less efficiently. So supplying them in supplemental form is actually a really important thing for you to do. That being said, a lot of us are afraid to remove vitamins and nutrients as we get older because we don't want to mess with it, right? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Well, we just keep adding and oftentimes we don't subtract. But at the end of the day, if you're feeling good, and you've got the money to pay for them, then in this case, why not? But regardless of how he trains, what he eats, or even what he takes, RFK Jr. has actually implemented his approach to fitness into his overall policies. And again, regardless of where you sit politically, I think there's something to be learned here. You have to be disciplined about it. And that, you know, discipline is important. We're here to build something that's much more enduring than wealth, and that's character. And the way that we build character is by making commitments and then keeping them. And we all know that, guys. If you can stay committed to what you do, you are not just building character but you're also building confidence in yourself. And one thing I think a lot of us lack these days, probably greatly influenced by the loving contributions of people being so kind on social media, is maybe a little bit of self-confidence. If you know you can make a commitment and show up and keep that commitment, you're gonna feel better off for it. That being said, there's also the outlook on family that I think for me, gives me the why of what I do. I have seven kids and I'm able to generally keep up with them. I'm doing a political trip to Hawaii. My son, Finn, is gonna come with me and we're gonna to surf together. You know, I can do that. You know, I can play volleyball with them. I can, some of my kids like to play tennis and I, um, I can do that. I can stay on a tennis court with them and I can be active and keep up with them. I want that in my life. I don't wanna be sitting on a couch for the rest of my life, you know, with a remote control in my hand, fighting with my family about what to watch. And there, I believe, is the secret to long-term success with a fitness plan because it's not just about how you look in the mirror. Though that definitely feeds our psyche every single day, if you have a why, a deeper meaning, then you will find the reason to get up when you least want to because those are the most challenging moments. And for me, I'm a father of eight-year-old twin boys. I want to make sure that I can play with them just like he said for years and years to come. And that's the thing that drives me, not because I want to see a six-pack when I lift my shirt, but that's what drives me when I think about not wanting to work out on a specific day. And as soon as you have that, you will find that reason every single time to make sure you make the commitment. I'll leave it at this. Are we just doing ourselves a service by taking care of our fitness or is there a bigger purpose in mind? When it comes to RFK Jr., he thinks there's actually a bit of a social obligation we all have to be fit.
We all need to stay in good shape, and that's important for not just ourselves, our individual lives, our satisfaction, our relationships with our family, but it's also important for our country to reduce the healthcare costs and to make sure that we're there and we're, you know, in good shape to serve the public and to serve our community. Oh, it's it's kind of a, a social obligation to try to keep yourself in shape. And that's something independent of your political beliefs that I can stand behind, and hopefully you as well, guys. If you're looking for more videos, make sure you click subscribe, turn on notifications. If you're looking for complete meal plans, workouts, supplements, we have it all available for you over at athletics.com. All right, guys, be back here soon in just a couple days. See ya.